What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Nolan Built Shop. Today we're going to be talking about the Phantom CNC. I had some questions from the previous video so today I want to go a little bit more in depth on it and before I get it put back together because I have it broken down for a new spool board right now and I'm in the process of preparing for a full kitchen cabinet job to run about 30 sheets on it. So before I get it all put back together I'm going to break down and give you a closer look on the CNC. All right, so the CNC I have here is the T-Series ATC 510. That means I have a automatic tool changer back here. And we're today, right, right now, we're going to talk about the phenolic bed and the vacuum uh, setup. So uh, this is a phenolic bed instead of having an MDF bed, and it comprises of four zones. So this is one zone. This is the second zone. This row here is the third zone. And then those back six holes are the fourth zone. And these are where your zones are controlled by. So you have these valves here to control each zone. So this CNC is running a 16 horsepower ATC spindle. And with it being ATC, it requires compressed air. And with compressed air, we come down here and the CNC, this is where your main connection is going to go in. This is an add-on for me. This is where the main connection is going to go in. You have this as your initial uh, filter. You have a filter up here on your Z-axis. And then you have another filter down here. So pretty well filtered. And of course, you're still going to want to run your own filter from your um, air compressor as well. And if you want to take it up the way it should be, you should get an air dryer as well, which is something I want to get in the future. This CNC features an automatic oil changer. The oil changer is so that you can oil your parts for your moving parts on your rack and pins and your ball screw. And you can do that from the controller itself using the with either oil or cooling button. I can't remember right now. These are my two rotary vein pumps. Basically they exhaust here and there and the inlets are coming through here and underneath there they tie together into one and then go up to the front of the unit to be able to pull suction through all of those holes. This is the automatic tool changer holder back here. It has eight tool changers and this is Cool thing that I like about it, you can basically change your tools with one hand with this set for ER32 collets. So I think that's pretty cool to have that set up there versus having to take it over to a vice on a workbench or something. So this is the probe on my unit. So I can do an auto set, I can set each one of these tools automatically they'll pick it up bring it over here touch off and that will set the heights for each individual tool all at one time so the cnc also features uh, alignment pins that's one there one here one there and then those two which are pretty cool i'll probably show you those guys in action once i get the cnc all put back together but, This CNC is a uh, rack and pin on your X and Y, and then it is ball screw on your Z. So this is the main controller for the CNC. This is where I can control everything manually and upload uh, anything with a USB right here. And uh, basically this is the control center for everything that I do on this unit. All right, guys, let's talk about the power supply that you need for the CNC. So this CNC, the 5x10, requires a 50 amp breaker for the actual power to the unit, a 30 amp breaker for the rotary vane, another 30 amp breaker for the other rotary vane pump for your vacuum bed, and then you need a 30 amp breaker for air compressor or whatever your air compressor requires. This is a 60 gallon uh, air compressor, uh, a bigger one may 
need uh, a different breaker um, and then you need a uh, 30 amp for your dust collection depending on what dust collector you have you may need a bigger one as well so basically right now I have four 30 amp breakers and one 50 amp breaker running the CNC operation itself so think about that before you buy your machine or just let you know that's what you're going to be uh, putting together after you buy your machine or to get prepared for your machine to show up all right guys now it's time to get the spool board set we're going to flatten one side flip it over and then flatten the other side that'll take the little skim coat off of the mdf and allow it to act as a vacuum hold down surface for when we get ready to start cutting all of this plywood as previously stated this is a 5x10 atc but I actually have about 61 by 121 inches of actual work surface mostly because I don't cut this spool board when I get it I just put it on there as I receive it and it comes in 61 by 121 size sheets all right guys let's load some plywood up and get to cutting I have about 30 sheets to cut and basically at this point of the video I am cutting the cabinet doors so that means about 25 sheets have already been cut and these are the last five sheets of the job to be cut I hope you like this video don't forget to subscribe like comment down below ask any questions about the CNC and about uh, me cutting out custom kitchen cabinets on the CNC